and I'm gonna hide it right here in my grill. Namaste, do you do it? And hello to my friends in Germany and Holland. Today I wanna make a video about a rocket stove hidden in this old grill. This thing has seen better days and only one side is still working. But rather than get rid of it just yet, I wanna convert half of it into a rocket stove. I've been using my rocket stoves to cook outdoors a lot more. But back there in rocket stove row isn't the most convenient when I'm also grilling chicken, which is one of my duties here in the Mills house. So my idea was to convert half of this grill, the half that's not working, into a rocket stove so I can be grilling chicken and cooking on the rocket stove at the same time. I think that convenience is gonna help me get a lot more use out of rocket stove cooking. The internal workings of my stealth rocket stove are gonna be built using fire brick. And I got a box of six, but that's not gonna be quite enough. Rather than buying another box, I'm gonna use a couple elements I've got on hand. One being a small slab of aircrete that I created as I'm practicing with that material. And the second being this Louisville fire brick that I had on hand. My grandfather was from Louisville, Kentucky and his uncle and grandfather at one point were the owners of Louisville Firebrick. So there's a little family history here. I'll need to clean this up a little bit. It's been sitting in the backyard. The assembly is gonna to go together something like this, but of course all these bricks will be trimmed down to size. Like I used in my Firebrick rocket stove on Rocket Stove Row, I'll be incorporating fireplace mortar all right, let's get started. Before I do anything on this build, I'm going to shut off the gas and disconnect it. I'm also gonna open the gas valve to let out any gas that remains. And then I'm gonna take apart the guts of the half of the grill I'm going to convert, disconnecting the igniter and removing the Venturi tube. I'm actually gonna hold on to the Venturi because I may see if it will work to actually run the rocket stove as well, or at least allowing it to start with gas. And remove the grate and the heat plate from the other side of the grill just to make it easier to work. Just like new. I'm also going to remove the Venturi bracket because I want the space in the back. This screw is so rusty I can't see what kind of screw head it is. Turns out it was a chisel head. Ah, it was a Phillips head after all. Well, that worked. I'm gonna do a quick test fit on my bricks to see how they sit in here. I think I'm gonna need to do a little grinder work to get this to fit just right. I'm gonna take out a little bit of this flange on the back side of the grill. Before I use the grinder, I'm checking behind this wall to make sure that my gas line doesn't pass back there. Even though it's empty, I don't wanna put a hole in it. Now my hand is never gonna be back here, but on principle, I'm gonna clean up these edges. I didn't expect that. Glad it wasn't loaded with wasps. All right, let's get a test fit. All right, I am happy with that. Let's mark them up and cut them down. I'm gonna check my grate placement here. It'll sit about like this. So I'm using a reused grill grate that I've been moving around between my stoves. Let me see how my pan fits on there. So I won't be able to close the lid, but that probably wasn't gonna be what I would do anyway with the rocket stove going. None of these need cutting. 
I'm just gonna take the ones and eat that. Got my chop saw set up with a masonry blade. I'm gonna cut the bricks. Respirator and ear protection are in order. Electricity would also be in order. I'm gonna cut the Louisville brick on both sides because I want the text to read across the front for old time's sake. I'm gonna slice the extra pieces into some small bricks to use to build up the stove. I'm attempting to cut the pieces in half so I have equal size bricks. my bricks cut, now I'm going to assemble. I'm gonna start by putting a thick bead of the fireplace mortar on all four sides of my aircrete floor. I'm gonna set that in place. Start with my two side bricks. My back brick is gonna be sitting on top of a spacer. I could put that on the top but I'd rather it be hidden on the bottom. Put some mortar on this. Go ahead and put those two together. I need to add mortar to the side of my side pieces to attach them to the back. While they have access to the back, I'm going to fill in the gaps here. Now I'm gonna add the sides of the riser. And where I can, I'm putting the factory edge toward the top. Now add the front. And then fill those gaps. I cut one of my small brick pieces in half and now I'm gonna brick in around the top. While the mortar is still soft, I can make some micro adjustments here and make sure this lines up right. And my cleaned up Louisville is gonna go right here. Of the six fire bricks, I've actually got this little piece left. And what I wanna do is put that underneath here to get just a little more of a, a dip underneath the fire tunnel. If we can call this a fire tunnel, we're going a bit hybrid here the proportions are off in terms of an actual rocket stove. We would normally have a longer run of fire tunnel. But uh, firebox, fire tunnel, and then riser. But uh, in this case, because we're working with a limited amount of space, this is gonna have to do. So, but I want to 
add this element here, which is in a sense going to add uh, that much more height to the riser. So I'm going to coat the sides really well, coat this end really well, and then I think the tension of will just hold this in place until it cures. And this mortar cures with heat, so we'll fire this thing up and then it'll get cured in place. And then lastly, the Louisville goes in. I'm gonna put a nice thick bead here on this just so I can get it nice and straight. My mortar just ran out, but I think I have enough to So you may have seen my video where I made a fire brick rocket stove that's back on Rocket Stove Row. One of the benefits of working with this material is that there's no cure time. In fact, you know, with concrete, you gotta wait 28 days till you have full strength. But with these fire bricks and the stove mortar being heat cured, we're good to go right now and start a fire. I think I'm gonna try some grilled cheese. I haven't done that yet. Wish me luck. Rocket stoves burn fast, so you want to have all of your fuel on hand, maybe even a little extra before you start. It's important to have your ingredients ready too. Change my mind from grilled cheese to grilled ham and cheese. All right, let's light it up. The trick with a vertical firebox like this is not overloading it. So make sure you get an air, air flow through it. Some small pieces of cardboard down in there. With a short riser like this, it's going to be tricky to get the draft started. Thought I heard a rocket. All right, I'm not gonna waste this heat. I'm gonna build my sandwich in the pan. In spite of the small riser, there's actually a nice little draft going. And I can actually hear a little bit of a roar. I don't necessarily want a ton of heat with this grilled cheese. It'd be super easy to scorch this if I'm not careful. This is actually probably enough heat. The cast iron will actually help spread that heat out.
I'm gonna let this fire die down and let the heat in the pan do the rest of the cooking. Gonna slide those coals to the back so the heat goes up. Certainly as the fire dies down. I know one question a lot of you might have is what about the gas from the grill? The heat in this rocket stove is going to be no different than the heat of the grill itself. Uh, in fact I've probably got more insulation with this rocket stove. So I will test this very carefully when I hook the gas back up but uh, I'm pretty confident that this is going to operate just fine. Use caution, you know, make sure you know where the gas line is on your grill if you do this and uh, make sure that it's going to be fairly clear of where the rocket stove is. Nice browning on the outside of my bread. This side could use a little bit more. So perhaps I could have had a little more firewood on hand to complete this cook. But not bad for a first try. And it's not burnt, so I'm not complaining. With those coals flickering like that, you can see that there's still air movement. I wasn't sure how the short riser was going to perform with the proportions being not normal, but I'm actually happy with how this works. There is no easy way to get the ash out of this stove. I will probably modify this little sheet metal dustpan uh, to fit down inside, put a handle on it, and then use the brush from the back of the stove to get the ash out. There's just one last test to perform. I know you would be upset with me if I didn't eat this sandwich, or at least taste it. Mm. Nice and warm. Mmm. Crunchy. Cheese is melted. This side's just right. This side could use a little more browning. We'll see you next time on Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives. Just kidding. The trick to this size stove seems to be having the sticks kind of leaning in, down in like that, so we get the fire kind of back in the fire tunnel just a little bit. Another benefit of this particular build is that it's one piece and it's not glued into the grill itself. So when I do replace this grill, I can just pull it out and then hopefully install it in my next grill. Now that we're final, I'm going to see if I can get the grill to close with my pan on. Almost. Stealthy, nobody knows it's there. I gotta say, fire brick is probably my favorite material for making rocket stoves with fire. Although I haven't tried aircrete just yet, so that's coming. I'm still practicing. Not quite ready yet. A quick reminder to tell me how to say hello in your language and I'll add it in my next video. Thanks to my patrons for helping make these videos possible. If you feel like I've added value, please consider joining me over on Patreon for extra perks and community. As always, our mission here at Green Shorts is to help you see green so you can be green and save a little green by doing it yourself. Thanks so much for watching. Please like and share and keep all those great comments and suggestions coming. Stay tuned for the next Green Shorts DIY video almost every Friday. Let's try the restaurant.